ECU Athletics and Pirate Sports Properties present The Joe Dooley Show. The Joe Dooley Show is brought to you by Vitant Health, official health system of the ECU Pirates. And now the voice of the Pirates, Jeff Charles. Welcome to the show this week. Joe will be here in just a couple of minutes and we'll look at the highlights from the victory ECU had over USF earlier in the week and then the game with SMU on a Saturday. Also coming up on our show, Brian Bailey will drop by our Pirate Player Profile. It will be freshman Brandon Suggs, who's off to a great career here at ECU. And coming up next week, another very busy week for Pirate basketball. Two more conference games are on the way, and the Pirates will be home on Wednesday night against Tulsa, and then ECU on the road next weekend against Cincinnati. Hang in there with us. Coach Dooley joins me right after this. Chargua will throw the ball inbounds. He's looking, he'll oh, throw it short to Jolly. Here's Jolly, he'll throw it up at the midcourt stripe. It oh. is no good, hit the back of the iron. Game over, you can paint this one purple. The Pirates have upset SMU, 71 to 68. What a great win for Joe Dooley's ball club. They had lost 10 in a row to SMU. That streak is over. The Pirates with a gutty effort, down 11 at halftime. When you're feeling less than 100%, Vitan Health can help keep you in the game. With Vitan Now Virtual Care, you can visit a North Carolina licensed doctor anytime, anywhere, on any device. It's private, secure, and affordable. Stay in the game with Vitan Now Virtual Care. Anytime, anywhere, on any device. For most bright eyed 20 year olds, college is all about finding yourself discovering your purpose in the world. It's spiritual. But for this astrobiology major, college is about making cheddar. While drinking Diet Coke, blueberry acai, and running the biggest underground sandwich joint in the greater Des Moines area. Make that money, young buck. Make that money. You may not have noticed, but it's all connected to the internet. Sure, it's YouTube, Netflix, and adorable selfies, but it's also high-octane gaming, security cams, thermostats, your fridge, Wi-Fi speakers, smartwatches, workout equipment, pet feeders, and even crockpots. Seriously, and it's all on the same internet connection. At least with internet from Suddenlink, your home can live up to its fully connected potential. Without it, not so much. Suddenlink, the fastest internet provider in the U.S. Tens of thousands of students attend East Carolina University, and some never set foot on campus. Because our distance education classes are taught by professional faculty and held to the same high standards as on-campus learning. With more than 90 online programs, 40 of them unique to ECU, more students than ever before are making East Carolina University their online destination. ECU Online, North Carolina's leader in distance education. joins us now and ECU it's been a lot of basketball for these guys with no classes of course here the last couple of weeks and Joe you've been able to go two times a day haven't you yeah it's been really good I think we've been able to practice a lot we've been able to really control uh, what the guys are eating we've we've catered in meals for the most part uh, been able to lift watch a lot of tape and, and hopefully get a little bit better a lot of togetherness but you have told me from day one these guys get along well they enjoy each other's company yeah it's really good I mean they spend a lot of time in the locker room I think the meals help being able to go out to eat lunch and dinner together or here in the facility and 
I think it's a really good time for them to, to watch a lot of tape, uh, spend a lot of time with each other, and get to know each other. Pirates playing some really good basketball, going into the game with SMU. Five wins in the last six games. Joe, if you could put your finger on a couple of things, where have you seen the most improvement with this ball club? Well, I think the quality of practice improved, and I think because the quality of practice improved, our, our play has improved a little bit. I think the defensive end, if you look at our defensive numbers, the last six or seven games, especially three-point field goal percentage and field goal percentage defense has really uh, dropped drastically, and I think that's helped a lot. And Jade Gardner has been absolutely terrific. He has strung all of these great games together. One of the best players in this league, no question, this year. And just every time out, Joe, he's putting up these big numbers. Well, I think the thing, and we talked about it last year, is as his game has evolved, including through the perimeter, I mean, he's now with threat out on the perimeter and uh, is incorporating a little bit of the three-point shot, which will really spread the floor for him. And I think the other thing you've really seen uh, as a maturity, in his maturity, is his passing. I mean, I think that's an underrated thing, and not all of his passes end up in assists, but he gathers so many people when he drives it that he's really able to uh, open the floor quite a bit. He is in such great condition, too. At the end of the game, he looks like he's as strong as at the tip-off. Well, he's he, he paces himself smart. He rests on offense sometimes and figures out how to get him. We try to get him around the media timeout so we can give him a couple extra seconds. You know, we get him at the 30, you know, 30 second mark so we can give him some rest. USF came in this week, a good ball club coming off a 15 point win over UConn, so they're pretty good, aren't they? Yeah, they've had some really good ones. They played Florida State, uh, almost had the Florida State game one, and uh, obviously for them, they've got really good guard play, and they have had a, a, had a great win against uh, UConn. Yeah, those two guards are really good, LaQuincy Rideau and also David Collins, so I guess it starts there, Joe. Yeah, no, those guys are really good players, first and third in the league in steals. Uh, two leading scores, and then Dawson and Castanetis are very good, and Durr has continued to improve, and Brown has always been a thorn on our side. Let's go out to Williams Arena, Minchie's Coliseum now, and pick up the highlights as the Pirates take on the Bulls. This week's highlights are brought to you by these local nationwide agents. Pirates play some great defense in this game, and Joe, I think you expected a knockdown drag out of a low-scoring game. Yeah, I mean, when you look at their defensive stats, you know, they're very good defensively, and uh, they came in averaging right at 62 points a game, giving up 61 points a game, so it wasn't going to be a, it was going to be a low possession game. And how about your ball club, Joe? In that first half, they held South Florida to 31 percent from the field. Just a terrific defensive effort. We did, we guarded pretty well. We kept the ball out of the paint uh, for the most part. We fouled a little bit too much, and uh, I did think the guys really, for the most part, followed the defensive game plan. And one of those plans was to defend the three, and they were only two of 11 from the three-point line. We've done a better job the last month or so of getting out on the three-point line. Early in the season, we really struggled, and lately we've been doing a little bit better job of getting people off the line. It was still a close game at halftime. The Pirates had a three-point lead, 31-28. to 28. Let's pick up action now in the second half. And, Joe, your ball club got off to a great start offensively in the second half, knocking down shots here. We really did. We got awful. We got some stops. We were out in transition. I thought the guys did a really good job of getting the lead. And uh, then, then we started turning it over a little bit too much. But we, we did get off to a pretty good start in the half. And what's good to see is Jaden Gardner popping out and hitting shots from the perimeter. He hits a three. He hits uh, shots now off the baseline, facing up from 15 feet. Well, he's really expanding his game, isn't he? Well, that'll open the court up. We've talked about that. I mean, he's, he's been shooting extra in practice, and we've been working on those type of deals. And I think he and Batumba both, uh, as the season goes along, will be a little bit more cons uh, consistent three-point shooters. We head down the stretch now, and the Pirates have to come up with some big plays. And Joe, your ball club uh, was able to do that. Let's talk about Tristan Newton. He had a couple of big uh, free throws. Yeah, Tristan had played a really good game, and I, I thought, you know, he controlled the ball, got us an offense. Uh, we've talked about his maturity, starting to feel more comfortable driving the ball and finishing at the rim, and I think he's going to continue to be a good player. And then Baruti hits a big three here. Huge shot, and, you know, he missed one earlier, and I thought that shot looked good, too, and it, when the ball's leaving his hands, I think he's a little bit more comfortable right now. Now, this was the play of the game. Jaden Gardner pops out and blocks the shot from David Collins, and this really preserved the victory. Yeah, it was a great switch and great play by Jaden, and he had a great defensive play a, a couple possessions earlier against uh, Rideau, when Rideau tried to drive it, and those were all big plays for and then the ball goes to the corner, and there's Jaden down there digging it out. Yeah, we we were able to dig up a couple of loose balls and did a nice job of not giving up extra possessions. So you can paint this one purple. The Pirates with a victory over USF, 62 to 59. It was like it was like a it's like a movie. It had its ups, it had its downs, but um, you also come out with a good feeling at the end when you lead the movie. So uh, I think we we played our heart our, out tonight. We had stretches when we were amazing. We had stretches when we were bad. We got stretches where we just solid, and solid wins a lot of games in this league. 
Yeah, I feel like our defense was good. But towards the end of the game, we got a little, a little like happy with the score because we started winning. We, I think we went up 13. I think we got comfortable, which made them come on a run. But I, I feel like we were solid enough at the end to hold the win to get the win. It's always a three-day weekend at Golden Corral, featuring Fish Fry Fridays, Prime Rib Saturdays, and Carvery Sundays. Three premium nights all year long. You can't beat three-day weekends at Golden Corral. The only one for everyone. People are tired of seeing banks pull out, relocate, or divest instead of investing in the communities that we live. Greg Steele, president of Town Bank, wants only the best for Greenville. Town Bank made a commitment to Greenville, Pitt County, and Eastern North Carolina. While you see other banks de-emphasizing this market, we are making a commitment, contributing money to nonprofits, being involved, volunteering, that all those things are things that people in Greenville want to see. It's always a three-day weekend at Golden Corral, featuring Fish Fry Fridays, Prime Rib Saturdays, and Carvery Sundays. Three premium nights all year long. You can't beat three-day weekends at Golden Corral. The only one for everyone. For most bright-eyed 20-year-olds, college is all about finding yourself, discovering your purpose in the world. It's spiritual. But for this astrobiology major, college is about making cheddar while drinking Diet Coke Blueberry Acai and running the biggest underground sandwich joint in the Greater Des Moines area. Make that money, young buck. Make that money. Welcome back to the show. SMU came into Williams Arena, Minji's Coliseum, a Saturday afternoon game at 2 o'clock at 12 and 2. A really good ball club. Yeah, terrific offensively, averaging 78 points a game. Tim's done a really good job. They're very versatile. Uh, all the parts are interchangeable, uh, very good in transition, and uh, very explosive offensively. Yeah, a very balanced club. They shoot it well. They defend it very well. They also rebound, so they don't have a whole lot of weaknesses. No, they're, they're, they're very good, very athletic. Uh, when the ball goes on the backboard, there's a bunch of guys above the rim, and uh, you know, they're very versatile. Like I said, Mike and Shagwa and all those guys, Jolly, those guys can all play a bunch of different positions. Let's go out to Williams Arena, Minji's Coliseum now, a Saturday matinee as the Pirates take on the Mustangs. Just over 4,000 on a Saturday afternoon as the Pirates are in action against SMU, a ball club coming in at 12-2. and two. And, Joe, you guys get off to a great start here. You make five of your first six shots. We got off to a good start and made some open threes, which helps. And I thought the guys did a nice job of moving the ball and, and got off to a real good start. Tyree Jackson, in particular, got off to a good start. Coach, he hit three threes. Yeah, he really was feeling it. I thought he, he did a nice job of setting his feet. and. He's been shooting the ball pretty well in practice. I thought he got us off to a real good start. And you could tell Jaden Gardner at the top of the scouting report for SMU is uh, he really had to work for his points, didn't he? Yeah, they did a good job of swarming him. Shagwa is a, is a, is a longer body, and uh, I thought that they did a nice job of swarming the ball. Jaden still was very efficient. I thought he did a nice job of really passing the ball, too. Even when SMU is building this lead here, Coach, uh, your guys uh, never panicked, did they? No, I, I, we, we, we got stuck in mud here for a little bit in the first half, and really the ball didn't move, and we didn't move. and. 
Uh, I thought it was our offense that hurt us as much as anything in the first half. I thought our defense was pretty good, but our offense hurt us. Yeah, it did because the Pirates only had 27 points on the board at halftime. 38-27 down 11 points as we pick up action in the second half. And, Joe, what would you tell the guys about picking up the offense in the second half? Well, we talked about more more, uh, more ball and body movement. We were, we were standing still. We had the ball reversed much quicker. I thought we drove the ball north-south as opposed to east-west a little bit more. We got to the paint. And I thought once the guys uh, drove the ball and we passed it, we made extra passes. And even if we didn't make a shot, we, we at least took good shots, which was, was part of the battle in the first half. But the ball started to go in, Joe, in the second half, especially from the three-point line. Tristan Newton was big. He hit three threes. He hit some big threes. J.J. hit some big threes. You know, I, I thought we got good efforts from some of those other guys. I thought Batumba gave us great minutes. I thought Charles Coleman gave us great minutes. And, uh, you know, those freshmen, you know, I thought Suggs and, and, and Tristan Newton gave us really good minutes also. And Joe defensively did a good job in this game. Went to a zone a little bit more in this game. Yeah, well, they had us in harm's way. We were in foul trouble. We had five guys in the first half with two fouls. And I thought in the second half it slowed down a little bit and at least kept them in front of us. And then really good to see three guards out there most of the time on the floor, Joe, for your ball club. Tell us about that. Well, we, we can play, you know, hopefully as we as we as this team evolves, we can play a bunch of different ways. We played small for quite a bit tonight also. We played Batumba and Jaden, you know, together with three guards. and. And I thought that, uh, you know, obviously Tristan gave us great minutes. I thought Tremont gave us great minutes. And uh, J.J. gave us great minutes also. So the guys continued to scrap and claw down late in the game. You really had to make some big plays, made some big defensive plays, made some big offensive plays. Jaden Gardner came up big for you, didn't he? Huge. And, and we rebound the ball. We didn't turn it over, especially at the end of the game. We got a shot down every time down the floor just about, which is really important. Uh, guys didn't look around. I thought we, we really did a nice job of trying to move it, make extra passes. So tell us now, Coach, about this last shot, the game winner from Tristan Newton out of the corner. Well, uh, Jaden set a really good screen, set a little step-up screen, and Tremont was able to turn the corner and get downhill, which forced them to help. And he saw an open guy and threw a nice drift pass, and, and Tristan made a great shot. And you can paint this one purple. The Pirates win it 71-68. to uh, this win was huge. Uh, as we've seen, bro, this place can get really loud in crunch time, and they got really loud for us all night, and they supported us, and we, we got hope they keep supporting us. Uh, we uh, we had to play for Tremont to go downhill. Well, Jaden set the screen, Tremont to go downhill, which we did. He went downhill. Three people collapsed on him, so he just drifted it to the corner, and I was wide open. What did it feel like when you saw that thing drop? Uh, it, felt, it felt good because we came back from the 11-point deficit at halftime, so we just needed it. We needed to come back and get a win. A case of Bud Light? This is the best Christmas ever. What is Christmas? Ah, it's a holiday he invented to celebrate the crisp taste of Bud Light. Oh, you shouldn't have. Mostly it's an excuse to get people to give in Bud Light. Let me guess, let me guess. Bud Light. And this will happen every year? Oh, yes. And also every Tuesday. This means so much to me. Next! Brewed to be crisp, Bud Light. Hi, I'm Jeff, the window man. We're celebrating our newly renovated showroom over 30 years ago. Our family here at Carolina Wind and Doors set out to help homeowners not only protect their biggest investment, but also to cut energy costs. Tell us more about it, Blake and Brad. Don't think you have to settle for those big, bulky plastic windows that everyone has to order from someone out of state. Our windows are created by hand right here in this design center. From years of experience, Carolina Windows and Doors has combined expertise with superior design. Everyone loves our easy tilting cleaning feature, allowing both sashes to be tilted to the inside. All of our windows have a thermal brake, providing superior energy efficiency. Our entry doors can also make a beautiful statement about your home, but also add the benefit of energy savings and security. Build your custom entryway with choices on just about everything, and top it off with a storm door for even more security and efficiency. Call us now at 1-800-545-7172, or visit us online at cwdnc.com. You may not have noticed, but it's all connected to the internet. Sure, it's YouTube, Netflix, and adorable selfies, but it's also high-octane gaming, security cams, thermostats, your fridge, Wi-Fi speakers, smartwatches, workout equipment, pet feeders, and even crockpots. Seriously, and it's all on the same internet connection. At least with internet from Suddenlink, your home can live up to its fully connected potential. Without it, not so much. Suddenlink, the fastest internet provider in the U.S.
When you're feeling less than 100%, Vitin Health can help keep you in the game. With Vitin Now Virtual Care, you can visit a North Carolina licensed doctor. Anytime, anywhere, on any device. It's private, secure, and affordable. Stay in the game with Vitin Now Virtual Care. Anytime, anywhere, on any device. You may ask, who do you bank with? And they'll say, a bank. But if you say, who is your banker? They don't know. Greg Steele, president of Town Bank, talks about what our business community's been missing. They don't have access to bankers, and that's something I think that's missing. And that gets back to caring. Fortunately, we will be here. We're basically available to them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Town Bank talks about caring. It's really just caring about a member in a manner that is more than just banking. Welcome back to the show. Each and every week we feature a Pirate player. This week it is Brandon Suggs. He has made a terrific contribution as a freshman. He's in the starting lineup. Joe, let's go back to the recruitment of uh, Brandon. Where did you find uh, find him? Well, we knew who he was. We hadn't had a chance to see him. And we were up at uh, Massanutten and uh, went up one of the first days. And uh, he played really well and we got involved and we were able to bring him in on a visit. And obviously, uh, you know, we're very excited when we got a commitment from him. I think he's going to be a really good four-year player for us. I think as he gets stronger, uh, which he will after this year. He'll continue to develop, and he's had a really good freshman year to start. Tell us a little bit about his game. He's very skilled, isn't he? He's skilled. Uh, you know, I think some of the things, when he, when he does get a little stronger, he's starting to finish around the rim a little bit better, but I think he'll be a consistent shooter by the time he's a sophomore, junior, and, and with strength, I think he'll be a better ball handler. Well, Brian Bailey had a chance to visit with Brandon. And now, here's today's Pirate Profile with Brian Bailey. Here with Brandon Suggs, the freshman from Powder Springs, Georgia. How do you get from Georgia to East Carolina? Talk about the recruiting process a little bit. The recruiting process is good. I think um, I met Rock and Dooley at my prep school, and they uh, they pressured me hard, talking about um, how they wanted to change the culture around uh, ECU. And it, Rock and them really pushed me to, to evolve my game, so I'm, I just made a decision to come here. And you're the type of player that can do a whole lot, and it had to be very attractive, not only to East Carolina, but some of the other schools. Yeah, it was a, yeah I feel like I'm very versatile, so I feel like uh, that's why I had a lot of uh, recruitment. When you look at this basketball team, so many new players, how has the adjustment been for you? Uh, it's been, it's been uh, hard, but it's been getting easier and easier as we practice and play, so I feel like we started to gel together more. What's the strength of Brandon Suggs' basketball game? Uh, defense. I, I take pride in defense. I, uh, I feel like my offensive game getting better, but I wasn't really always offensive, but I feel like I'm picking up offense. And is that pride in defense? You know, early in the year, this Pirate team struggled on defense, and, and they need defensive players, so that's a key, isn't it? Yeah. We, um, a lot of us didn't have that, like, like defense and knowledge, but Dooley's teaching everybody, so everybody's getting used to it now. So I feel like that's why our defense is getting better. All right. What's your goal for the rest of the season? Keep winning games, try to get to uh, win the AAC championship. That's Brandon Suggs, freshman on the East Carolina Fire basketball team. The power play of the game is brought to you by Core Power, official protein drink of the Pirates. 62-59, ECU leads by three. Collins picks the ball up in the midcourt stripe with 15 seconds to go. Collins will take a three, top of the key, rim it out, rebound to Brown, Brown out to Collins, a three is blocked out of there by Jaden Gardner. What a block by Gardner with 5.9 to go. It's always a three-day weekend at Golden Corral. Featuring fish fry Fridays, prime rib Saturdays, and carvery Sundays. Three premium nights all year long. You can't beat three-day weekends at Golden Corral. The only one for everyone. Tens of thousands of students attend East Carolina University, and some never set foot on campus. Because our distance education classes are taught by professional faculty and held to the same high standards as on-campus learning. As one of the largest universities and the largest online community in the state, you'll find the Pirate Nation wherever you are. With this many ways to connect, share, and succeed, we'll guide you to graduation and beyond. ECU Online, North Carolina's leader in distance education. 
When you're feeling less than 100%, Vitin Health can help keep you in the game. With Vitin Now Virtual Care, you can visit a North Carolina licensed doctor. Anytime, anywhere, on any device. It's private, secure, and affordable. Stay in the game with Vitin Now Virtual Care. Anytime, anywhere, on any device. Featuring Fish Fry Fridays, Prime Rib Saturdays, and Carvery Sundays. Three premium nights all year long. You can't beat three-day weekends at Golden Corral. The only one for everyone. You may ask, who do you bank with? And they'll say, a bank. But if you say, who is your banker? They don't know. Greg Steele, president of Town Bank, talks about what our business community's been missing. They don't have access to bankers, and that's something I think that's missing. And that gets back to caring. Fortunately, we will be here. We're basically available to them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Town Bank talks about caring. It's really just caring about a member in a manner that is more than just banking. Town Bank presents the play of the week. Town Bank, serving others, enriching lives. Moody at 6'6", and Gardner at 6'6", the only two bigger players on the floor. Pirates bring it up. Here's Tremont all the way to the basket, in the paint. Finds Tristan Newton for the three. Yes! He hit it out of the left corner. Tristan Newton hits the three. 2.7 seconds to go. Pirates lead 71-68. Welcome back to the show. We're in January and the games come so very quickly. Two conference games at least each and every week and that will be the case again this week. The Pirates will be home against the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Frank hates ball club on Wednesday night and this is a team that can hurt you too, Joe. Yeah, I mean they've got balanced scoring. Ibanu and uh, Brandon Rochelle, those guys are really having good years and they, you know, they've got a bunch of guys averaging between 8 and 12 points a game so they can hit, hit, hit you a bunch of different ways. And then the Cincinnati Bearcats on Sunday in Cincinnati, our first look at the beautiful new 5th 3rd Arena, an $85 million renovation to that building so we're looking forward to going in there and Joe, they are really good. They've got the Cumberland Cousins, don't they? Yeah, they've obviously Cumberland's one of the premier players in our league and the big kid has, has had a great vote, has had a, a really good year, lead, leading the league in field goal percentage, so they've got really good bounce. And a new look, too, on the sideline for this ball yeah, club. John did a really good job at Northern Kentucky, and obviously it'll be interesting to see how that new facility looks. Yeah, absolutely, and so the Pirates have two more games coming up this week. Joe, as always, thanks so much for the visit. Thanks, Jeff. That is the head coach of the Pirates, Joe Dooley. Join us next week for another edition of the Joe Dooley Show. Pirate fans, you're the best. The Joe Dooley Show has been presented by Suddenlink, now offering internet speeds up to one gig. The Joe Dooley Show is an exclusive presentation of the Pirate Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.